Hey loves, I'm back at it again. We're doing a, another quick tip tutorial. This one is on how to fade off your images, especially when you have these blunt cut edges of your photos where the rest of it looks organic and you want to do your layering, but you just, like me, you can't stand to see a straight edge where something looks cut off. So if that's what you're here for, that's what we're learning today. I'm going to go through a couple of different methods that we, we can work on to do this. I'm going to move this out of the way. I want you to have your own whole new... This is... I just showed um, in the last video how to change your workspace. So now it has changed my workspace. I'm just going to move those out of the way for now. And we'll drag this over just a little bit so we see more of the image okay so as it stands right now I'm going to take this entire image control T to transform it just to drag it in so you can see that it has a really harsh edge down there and if we were layering that would be a problem if you know me you know that would be a problem so right now we're going to go ahead and rasterize that layer mask and apply it so that we can pretend like this was just a straight up PNG that we had already cut out as you did from the previous video but at least that also shows you how to apply your your layer mask if you don't want to um, edit it at any point in time so we have a PNG we have two tools that we're gonna look at today one is gonna be the brush the brush is my favorite for when I don't want to just do a straight across uh, gradient when I have a photo, especially one that I might want to round off the edges for, and I'm going to show you that technique. So we're going to do a new layer mask down here, the rectangle with the circle. And then we're going to make sure that we have a soft brush selected. And you can tell from here, you got your soft brush. I'm going to in or decrease the hardness all the way to zero, and I'm going to increase the size. Now, if I don't like how something looks, let me undo that because I just created a little um, brush stroke right here unintentionally but let's say I don't like how it looks and maybe I want my brush to be bigger or smaller I can right click and change the size of my brush there now I'm choosing a bigger brush because I really want to play with my fade I don't want it to immediately fade I'm just building on it until I see absolutely no line at the bottom anymore and what I do to test is I create a new layer bring it to the back and I drop some kind of funky color in there either magenta or, or cyan depending on what colors are already in my image and you see I still see some of that hard line that I would not have been able to tell without that image in the background so let's get back on the job let's grab our paintbrush and keep it going so now I have a nice smooth and that's only because I chose this big old brush that has this huge fade off um, I could delete that layer mask let's create a fresh new one and if I would have created a smaller brush it would have done more damage but I would not have had such a step in my gradient do you see what the difference is there I like steps in the gradients I like for it to look smooth and, and look like a transition um, other thing you can do, let me show you another thing you can do with brushes. Oh lord, what am I doing here? Let's delete that layer mask. You don't have to brush it off to make it look smooth. You can grab a brush and let's see. I'm trying to get a, a brush with some meat on it. Maybe one of my splash color brushes. Let's go with that. So you still have black selected. I'm going to right click and bring the size down quite a little bit. But maybe you don't want a clean kind of gradient edge. You want something a little more grungy. And you can you don't have to stamp it. You can use it actually as a brush too. But this is uh, you use your brushes. That's what they're here for. You have that option. And lo and behold, I was doing the exact wrong thing. I'm glad you got a chance to see this because I always tell you not to paint on your images. And what happened was I deleted my layer mask and then I thought I was painting on it. So non-destructive is what we want to do here. Same idea though, it actually is a perfect representation of um, 
what you could do and you don't have to do. So normally we would erase or paint on our actual image if we don't know any better. But now that we know better, we know we can use the layer mask and I'm painting black because black conceals and white reveals. So I am concealing part of the image without messing up my actual image. Because if I come back and I need that part of her waistline because I need to go into the words or whatever other element that I'm fading it into, then I can always disable. You can disable layer mask. You don't have to delete it. Or I can delete it. So again, I'm going to delete the layer mask. Delete the layer mask. And now I'm going to show you how to do it with the gradient. So the gradient is probably one of my go-to's because it's so quick. Uh, if you see your paint bucket, then you have to hold this down in order to get to your gradient tool. But the same idea. Now if I do this, guess what? I'm painting on my image. So again, I'm just letting you know, uh, I recognized before I was about to make that mistake just now, that I need to make sure that I create a new layer mask. All right, so right now I have this weird gradient selected. It's one of my metallics. I want to select the gradient that goes from the foreground color to transparent. And let me show you why. Because when I'm painting the solid black, the solid black is going to be what conceals. The transparent is not going to affect the white and it's going to let the white reveal. Okay. And the reason why I use a transparent is I'm going to show you in just a little bit. Let's do this step first. You see me holding down shift because I want to make sure that this gradient goes at a straight perpendicular angle from the bottom of the picture. If I were, if I wanted to fade it off of the angle, I have that option. So not saying that you won't do that, but most of the time you're going to be fading it from the bottom, so you're going to hold shift. All right, so that's what it did. See how easy that was. So let's do it again. Nikki, this one's for you. I'm doing this for you one more again. All right, so delete my layer mask. This is how your PNG should be, right? You're going to go, and if this was a jpeg or or something that you brought in that when it when you bring it in it says background let me, sh let me show you that this is how usually it looks i don't want to lose my transparency though um i think i can background from layer yeah i knew it was going to do that but sometimes when you open up a picture it it has background and it's locked if you ever see that double click it it'll ask if you want to label it a layer and hit enter and now it is an editable layer but I, I knew it was going to put a color on there because it basically makes it a, a JPEG at that point, puts a background on it. All right, so what I was showing you, you have your PNG in there. You have your, you can see your checkerboard. You know it's a transparent background. Go ahead and create a new layer mask. You see how it's clipped to that photo? Go to your gradient. And if you don't see gradient, if you saw the paint bucket, cool. Hold that down. Grab your gradient tool. And then let's make sure that you have foreground to transparent selected. And also, let's say if the last thing I had selected was my little magenta color, um, then I could go in and why did it select gray? I've got something going on with this color mode right now. Ask a image mode. I'm in RGB. Oh, don't. Oh, oh, I know why. Because um, basically, I'm I was on the layer mask, so it's gonna make it gray. Now that's important to know too. If you don't select black and you select gray, then that means whatever value of that gray is, it's not purely going to take away the color. It added a gray gradient, which means it is probably what, about 50%, something like that. So it's only going to remove about 50% of the um, the opacity in the image. I was like, why is it selecting gray and I made pink? Um, but yes, so if this was any color other than black or white, the way that you reset it is to click right here. It's going to reset white to black, but we need black in the foreground. So we are going to switch the foreground, bring that up here. That way when we create our layer mask, it's going to go now from black to transparent. We click on the inside meat of the picture. Let me show you what happens when you select the outside meat of the picture. I, I guess I'm, I'm showing you more errors than I'm showing you ways to do it right. But I want to let you know if this, these are the problems that you have and this is why. Um, let me go ahead and add my magenta layer back to the background. I'm going to show you something. Now, I'm going to show you the difference 
I'm going to redo that. And I'm going to redo this layer mask. I'm going to show you the difference between when you have the inside meat selected when you start a gradient and when you come from the outside meat. All right, if I come from the outside meat, that means it's going to start my hardest part of my gradient outside of my image, which means by the time it makes it travels into my image, it's lightening up. It's, it's, it's not the, the strongest 100% uh, opacity at the edge anymore. So, and I actually did not do that as a layer mask. Whoops. Bring back my layer mask and let me show you the difference. I'll do it again. Outside meat selected, I still see my hard line. Inside meat selected, I don't have a choice to have a hard line because I started from inside the image. So keep that in mind. That's like essential um, when you want, when your, your goal is to get rid of that, um, that hard line. So that's it. That's it for this tutorial. Um, we did the brush, we did the soft brush, we did an artistic brush, we did the gradient, and I even painted on my own picture to show y'all what not to do. I'm an excellent teacher, if I may say so myself. <laughs> Alright guys, so um, that's going to be it for this video. If you have any questions, make sure you comment on the video. Um, also, if you join the Innate Creatives private Facebook group, um, when you post issues and things that you're having, um, problems that you're having with Photoshop or your designs, um, most times we can go in there and say, hey, if you, you know, show us a video of what you're doing or show us a screenshot, uh, we may be able to help you out in there. So um, Innate Creatives is spelled I-N-N-A-T-E, Creative, C-R-E-A-T-I-V-E-S. It's a private group on Facebook. All right, guys. So until then, I'll check you in a bit. Love you. Bye.